All right, YouTube. Today's No Judgment Friday. I uh, got home a little early and uh, was kind of excited to see if I could get this Boyer Schultz 612 surface grinder running. So I wired it up. And of course, I didn't have a wire with three wires. This is four ones to ground. So I have a bunch of extension cord stock that I <laughs> cut to the same length, ran it all the way over to that VFD over there and uh, that runs the three phase for the little lathe. But um, let's move this out of the way and uh, let's see if she works. I got the main power on. Okay, this switch is on and I'm pretty sure this one here turns on the spindle. Oh, would you look at that. There she goes. I have this off because I wanted to see if this little manual or this oil pump is working, which you probably can't tell without a flashlight, but the little motor's spinning, which means it's oiling. So that's cool. That's exciting. Got nothing else to show on it right now. But uh, what I think I am gonna do, ugh, oh, shop's a mess. I should be cleaning the shop, so I should be doing it instead of playing is I have this square stock here and in one of these drawers here I think it's this one nope this one I got some old some diamonds not old but some diamonds so I'm gonna drill a hole with a set screw this is 7 16 and it'll set in there with a set screw holding it and then the mag base will hold this down so I could dress the wheel but uh, I had another diamond for it somewhere, but it might actually be in my pocket. No, here it is. This is the one I want to use. It's uh, it's it's actually in, the diamond's okay. I when I was a machinist, I ran into it with the uh, surface grinder we had there. <laughs> so, anyways, but that's what I'm gonna use. Just drill a hole in there. But anyways, like I said, no judgment Friday here. I, yeah, no words for that, but anyways, just playing around, still got to get this working, and uh, there'll be a video on that too, but anyways guys, I hope your Friday was good, and uh, there's just a quick update on the surface grinder, oh, you know what I do want to see is if the, it, it has a coolant system, back here that's supposed to fan this I imagine it's supposed to hook on here to suck all the crap assuming that's what this is oh, it works oh it's got water in it though blowing water all out I don't that's a fan that should be just an exhaust fan that sucks up the grinding dust this thing has definitely been left outside because when I turned you can't tell you couldn't tell when I turned this on. First thing I do is blew water out the motor. Let's... Yeah, I gotta clean that up now. But, anyways, that's what I'm gonna do today is dink around with this. Make that little dresser for the wheel and... I just wanted to see if it worked. I had some, my wife, she's pregnant, so she's, she's taking a nap. Cause she didn't sleep good last night. The baby was kicking her all all night. So I figure if, when I'm inside, I make a bunch of noise. So I'd hang out here really quick for a couple hours and let her relax. But anyways, there she is. That's a quick update. Hope you guys like it. Talk to you later. Be safe. All right. So I just took this chunk of steel, and you can see the shiny parts. I just ground the corners with the grinder, and then I broke all every, all the edges with the file and the corners. Made sure there's no burrs on it. Now I'm gonna drill it in here, and then uh, chamfer it, and then drill, flip it, and drill it for a set screw. So now that I got the hole drilled. Going to want to break the corners. So I'll take this chamfering tool. Some people use them for center drills, but it's a little chamfering tool. Put it in here. 
and that'll come down and just break these corners. All right. <clears throat> I got the centering drill in there, or the chamfering tool, I mean, and uh, this should be able to just come down and kiss it. There. Leaves a breaks that corner and leaves a nice, nice rounded edge there. Only takes a second just to break that corner. You, some people put these in a drill. When I was a machinist, I used to put these in a drill and just deburr my parts afterwards. But uh, now we'll flip it and uh, drill a set screw hole here. So I opted for a quarter 20 uh, set screw hole. And uh, the reason being for that is I just had this random little quarter inch Allen head bolt that was uh, floating around here and I thought, oh, that'd be perfect for a little set screw right there. So that's what I'm gonna do. And what I want, here's the quarter inch tap. And what I wanna show you guys is for your tapping, I have this nice cool chart and you can find this online. I got this one's machinist in the garbage. Um, we are gonna do a, let's see, where is it at? Quarter 20, which is quarter inch bolt, 20 threads per inch. The drill size is a number seven. So I got a number seven drill bit in there right now. And uh, let's uh, drill it. We're drilling it a little slow, but that's okay. And I came down three eighths of an inch on center from the front. The hole's drilled three quarters deep, three quarters of an inch deep. And uh, I came down from this face over three eighths of an inch, so three seven five. Now we're through. Now I'll show you guys how to tap it. Okay, so I got the quarter twenty tap in there, and I'm just gonna I'm not gonna film this because I it's gonna take two hands on a drill press, but I'll just run the switch on and off. I'll turn it on, power feed it, and then shut it off, and then I'll loosen this, and then back it out by hand, and that'll be done. But you can do these by hand. In fact, on this on a drill press, it's best to do it by hand. Um, I just want to make sure it's nice and straight with the hole and not crooked or anything, and I, I can do it no problem. So Okay, you can see I got the tap in there. I just power tapped it down, and... Uh, now I'll just back the quill up. It's better if you have a reversible drill oh, hole thing came out. Oops, that's okay. I this taper's not in there very hard because I use this this chuck on the um, on the little on this lathe because the chuck I have for it, it's a China cheap piece of junk. It doesn't run true, but this is a nice um, five eighths Jacobs chuck, but. There you go. Nice and tapped, I'll blow it out and uh, put it together. Okay, got it all together. That's the finished product. Nothing fancy, but, it, but it'll do exactly what I need. And what I needed was the weight and the mass for the magnet to chuck to, to hold, to hold this diamond. One thing I wanted to add is, any time and every time you can, I run anti-freeze, or anti-seize, because, anti-freeze, <laughs> anti-seize. Um, especially if I'm running any sort of coolant, this would rust itself in there so tight you'd never get it out to replace it. But got it all cleaned up and in seized up and all this needs to do, move all this junk. This is, the handle on this is broken, so I, well this is for the magnet. These, this all goes to here. But uh, after I'm not gonna use this diamond, well I will, but I gotta get all this cleaned up, all the rust off of it. Bolt this table down, get the magnet working. Once the magnet's working, I'm gonna grind this all, so it's all parallel with the machine. But all that's gonna do is, it'll just sit right there and magnet down and, you know, then you'll bring the wheel down, touch off and adjust the wheel. But uh, there we go, there's the uh, little diamond holder.